In this second part of the use case about precipitation anomalies, we are going to get some more information about precipitation data and work a little bit on the map itself. In the last video, we calculated the precipitation anomalies for Madagascar and added the results to the map. However, it might be a little bit difficult to interpret the data as a legend is missing. So let us add a legend to the map. First, we have to generate an empty panel, which will be added to the lower left corner of the map. Next, we have to fill this empty panel with some information. And we start with a title, which will be anomaly in millimeters and has a line break between those two words. This title is then added to the panel. Next, we want to add the maximum value of our visualization parameters and add it to the legend. We get this max value from our visualization variable that we provided in the last video. After we added this max value to our legend panel, we have to add a color gradient to the legend. And we do this by generating a thumbnail from our color scheme that we provided and add this thumbnail to the panel itself. As a last step, we have to get the minimum value of the visualization the same way how we provided the maximum value by getting the min value from the visualization variable. After this value is also added to the legend, we can add the whole legend panel to our map. And then we can run the script already and a legend will pop up in the lower left corner. If we want to change the value ranges of this image in the layer settings and provide maybe a range from 250 to minus 250, we can apply these new values and they will be applied to the image itself, but they will not be applied to the legend. Remember to distribute your data range equally around zero as it should match to the color ramp. If you want to apply these new values to the legend itself as well, you have to go back to the top of your script and change these values here. The new values will then be applied to your legend as well. Now we want to get some more information about historic precipitation data and get the monthly precipitation over time. For that, we can generate a chart that displays the monthly precipitation sum over the whole time period of CHIRPS data. First, we need some information about the CHIRPS data itself, including the start date of the very first image and the end date, so the very last image that is available. Then we calculate the difference in months, so how many months lie between those two dates, and create a list that uh, lists the number of months. Next, we map over this month list and um, generate a start and end date for each month within the whole time frame of CHIRPS data. Filter the image collection of CHIRPS for these dates and sum them up. We also have to generate some metadata information, which will be needed in the chart later. 
Now we have summed up our monthly precipitation data and we also have to manipulate our area of interest a little bit so we can have a label when we move the cursor over the chart. So we turn our area of interest into a feature collection and set a metadata or a property uh, which is named label and its value is precipitation in millimeters. As a last step, we have to generate this, this chart and we'll do this by using a UI chart image, image series by region and provide our monthly precipitation sum that we have just calculated. Our regions will be the area of interest. Our reducer will be the reducer mean. So for each date, we calculate a single value and this single value will be the mean of all pixels within our area of interest. The band will be the precipitation band and the scale will be 5000 meters, which is roughly the resolution of CHIPS data. Our X property is the system time start, as I told earlier. This is what we need the metadata for. And we apply some, some more information to make this chart pretty. As a last step, we're going to print this chart to our console and click on Run. The chart will then be generated and printed to the console. The whole process might take a minute or two. After the chart is generated, you can move your cursor over the chart and get the precipitation values for each date or each month in this case. If you want to export the data, you can also do this by opening the chart in a new tab and download the data as a CSV file.